Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my March TBR, but I'm actually really excited because we're doing something new. I've seen a few people do this, so it's not like new to me, or it's not, it's not a new idea, but it's new to me, so I thought I would do it. But today we are going to be picking my TBR based off of some prompts. I actually just downloaded three sheets and then cut them up and put them in here. So there is actually a lot. So shuffling is going to be pretty interesting, or shuffling, shaking them, I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking we're going to probably do around, I think I'm going to stick out a solid five, or nervous if I should do four or five, because I have to consider, like, my book of the month um, pick and stuff like that. We're just going to go for it, though. So this is my bookshelf. You guys are only seeing, like, three shelves, really only two. Um, but all of these books, I believe, I have not red I'm almost certain um and so basically we are going to pick four let's say four we're gonna pick four of these and then find a book on this shelf or on my digital um Libby I do have some holds so I have a physical TBR that is my goal but also if I need to I have my Libby TBR so yeah I'm excited we're just gonna we're just gonna shovel this around there's honestly probably too many prompts in here but um, I'm just gonna move them around and then pick one. Oh my gosh, okay. So this says inspired by a classic, which this is actually kind of perfect because I actually need to work on an adaptation. I was planning on reading it in April though. So let me see, let me look really fast on my, I think the book I'm going to choose is Never by Jessa Hastings. I have been reading a few Jessa Hastings novels. I know this is obviously inspired by Peter Pan. So I'm pretty sure that's a classic. If it's not, I apologize. But I think this is going to be our pick. I'm very excited for this. Um, it says, Never is an awfully long time. Growing up, Daphne always knew Peter Pan would come for her. The way he'd come for her mother and her grandmother Wendy before that. The Darling Girls. Their stories are all the same. The forever young boy at their window after their 13th birthday. And the shimmering magical land behind a star. When Peter doesn't show for Daphne until she's 17. Grown and with no excuse for his tardiness, Daphne doesn't know what to think. Still, she has always been told that Peter Pan is her destiny. It's beyond choice to take his hand and leap into the stars no matter what comes next. But in Neverland, Peter's true colors begin to show. One moment he's making Daphne's heart flutter, and the next he's forgotten her entirely. So when Daphne stumbles into the path of Jamison Hook, the pirate son of Peter's nemesis, he, she lets herself get swept up in his vulgar charm despite the warning signs. Both boys are trouble and both have dangerous secrets about the strange fantasy land they call home, and if she loses her heart to either one, Daphne might just lose herself too. So it sounds like a little love triangle. Also, if I wasn't in frame during that, I apologize. But yeah, I'm actually really excited for this one. I think this book is beautiful. I will say it's like a super large um, paperback, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, we have number one. Let's get number two. This is honestly such a fun way to um, get a book. Oh, okay. This one says five star prediction. Oh gosh, this feels kind of like a hard question. I feel like this is kind of cheating because this is one of my favorite poets. It's a poetry book, but I do really want to read that, this, and it's Emily Dickinson's Envelope Poems. I think this is going to be so good. My friend um, Major got it for me, Major and Ashley got it. And basically, Emily Dickinson wrote some poems on scraps of envelopes, and this is just kind of the the poem. So they have a picture of the envelope and then kind of a translation right here. So I'm really excited for this. Um, and yeah, excited about this, I'm almost certain it's going to be a five star read. So this is perfect. Hey, halfway done through the envelope or the TBR jar prompts, whatever it's called. Okay, got another one. Lowest rated on TBR. Oh, this is, we're going to have to pull out Goodreads. I have most of my books on this shelf. I would say a majority on my shelf are in my Goodreads, so this should be no problem to find out. <laughs> Guys, Never is actually the lowest rated book on my TBR right now. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hold on. Oh, that's so sad. Um, 
Since I actually already picked that one, I'm going to do the second lowest rated, and that's My Lover's Lover by Maggie O'Farrell. So let me grab that one. I got this while I was in the UK. I just really honestly thought the cover was really pretty. So this says, when Lily moves into Marcus's flat, she is intrigued by signs of his recently departed ex-lover. A single dress left hanging in the wardrobe, a mysterious mark on the wall, the lingering odor of Jasmine. Who was this woman and what exactly were the circumstances of her sudden disappearance? It doesn't take long for Lily's curiosity to grow into an all-pervading obsession. Honestly, I don't know why. I'm just going to make a prediction. I feel like this might be a Jane Eyre retelling. It probably isn't, but like that was kind of giving me Jane Eyre retelling. If I'm right, I promise I did not look that up. But yeah, okay. So that's our third book. And now we're going to do one more from the TBR jar. And then I have some other books that I plan on reading this month. So I'm going to go ahead and include those um, at the end. So this is our last one. Oh, this is so fun. I'm definitely going to have to keep on doing it this way. Okay. Okay. An author you have read before. Um, okay. Let's see. Honestly, a lot of these I could do. So this might this might take a second. Oh, I'm all I'm like kind of leaning towards Nightbane by Alex Astor. I've been wanting to read this book because I read Light Lark um, last fall, and so it'd just be nice to be updated in this series. But I'm gonna keep on looking. I was also considering Eileen, but this is set around Christmas time. So I personally like keeping like wintry books for the winter season, like around Christmas. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna read this one, but I was considering, I was considering it. So if you guys read Light Lark, I actually did not like the twist of the love interest. I typically go towards the darker love interest, if you know, but that was not the case for Light Lark for some reason. Um, so I'm interested to see how this goes, if it'll change my mind. I'm feeling like probably not, but I guess we'll see. You never know. Okay, next I have some books for class. Um, I just have three of them. I'm probably going to be maybe reading another one. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but I know for a fact these three. So one of the classes I am reading the book of Marjorie Kemp. This is may may or may not be the first autobiographical autobi autobiography um, for um, a medieval woman, I believe, or known as the earliest audi autobiography in the English language. So um, I have started reading this. It's honestly really interesting so far and I am excited to finish this. It's medieval, 15th century, definitely interesting. Um, she's really a crazy lady, but in the best way. In class, um, we are reading Frankenstein adaptations. So I have two of those and that is Poor Things by Alistair um, Gray, which I know this has got super popular recently because obviously Emma Stone um, is in it and she plays Bella Baxter who is kind of a twist on the Frankenstein um, story and so I'm going to be reading this one I'm actually presenting on this one this was my personal choice and then the book that we are reading as a class is Jeanette Witterson's Frank Kistein um, which I believe is a queer yeah it's a queer um, retelling or adaptation I don't know if it's necessarily a retelling but it takes um, elements of the novel so I'm actually really excited to read both of these honestly all of the books that we have lined up for this month so far are really good um, I do have a few more the first being Major Ashley and I have a book club it is new for 2024 we've only done one book we kind of combined January and February but our March book club book is going to be Babel by R.K. Uh, Kwong I, I actually don't remember their name so I'm just gonna put here um, I don't own this book and I think I'm gonna have to get it at the library on Libby. The hold is literally 13 weeks, I think. I don't, or nine weeks. It was nine weeks. Um, so I think I'm gonna get a physical copy from the library so I can hopefully read this by April 1st. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna double check my Libby because I do have some books on there that are running out and I wanna finish them, obviously. Finish with my physical books. This is a poetry book or not even a poetry book. I don't really know what this is, if I'm being honest. I started this. I need to finish it. It's Grapefruit, Grapefruit by Yoko Ono. Um, 
So yeah, I do need to finish this and then I need to give it to Anna because she has to borrow it. I believe the only March release is A Prisoner's Throne, which is the second book in the duology for the, um, I actually don't even, is it The Stolen Heir? Is that the duology? I believe it is. Um, but yeah, I am so excited for this one. I actually need to go buy a physical copy to go with the rest of the series. But yeah, I think this comes out in a couple days. Maybe the day that this is being published. I can't remember for sure. But yeah, those are all the books. There are a lot of them. There's definitely a lot of them, but they're all going to be so good. Hopefully I can read them all. If not, that's okay. Um, hopefully four was a good number to start off with. But yeah, this was really fun and I'm definitely going to be doing this again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.